people all around the world are creating their own laboratory equipment and supplies nowadays and I thought well I would like to make myself a shaker table so I can agitate some solutions in an upcoming project. After a little bit of Google Foo, I found that Adafruit had already done this. Noe and Pedro made a design and instructions fully available, so I thought, well, I should make this myself. Using the Anycubic i3 Mega 3D printer, I was able to fabricate all the parts I needed. With a few parts I had to order, such as bearings and some screws and nuts, simple stuff. The assembly was quick and easy, and it turned out just perfect. It does everything I wanted it to do. It can agitate solutions slow or fast. I did deviate from the Adafruit instruction slightly with my own electronics hardware, but overall the function is still exactly the same. You can put a jar, a beaker, a flask, whatever you want on the top and it will agitate the solution at whatever speed you set it to. Works just perfect. Today we'll take a look at how I did this, the instructions I followed, we'll go through the process and hopefully this helps someone. This episode brought to you in part by PCBWay. Check them out at the link below for your next electronics project. They offer competitive rates for all PCBs, parts and assembly as well as 24-7 tracking of your order from start to finish. To get started, I went to learn.adafruit.com and checked out Noe and Pedro's full tutorial. They have a full parts list. You can order all the parts you need with just a click, so I advise anybody go check that out first. I downloaded all the STL files from their GitHub, which allowed me to slice them all in Cura. My settings for Cura are all posted on my own GitHub repository for all my printers. This is the i3 Mega. This printer has been an absolute rock star for me since day one. Easy to assemble and I have not touched it since. Believe it or not, I've only leveled the bed once since I got this printer. That's in part mainly to the i3's Anycubic Ultra Base print bed. You don't have to use any force to get your prints off the bed at all. They just fall off. So with that, you don't have to actually knock your bed out of level. You just pick them up like this and that's it. That's, it's just that easy. I have a video of this on my channel. So with a bunch of hours of printing the various parts, I did sew a couple of different filaments just, just for some color change. They turned out fantastic as always. So I did what I always do with just about any project. I gather all the parts out on the bench and just give everything a look over, see if everything is gonna work, see if they're gonna work together. Turns out I was short a few different nuts and bolts. So I had to make do with what I had on hand. It is a pandemic after all, so parts were limited. The bearings I actually already had on hand when I first saw this tutorial, I had gone to eBay and ordered them slow boat. Well, I, they sat there for so long, I forgot I even had them. The motor to drive the shaker is uh, for mostly robotics kits and stuff. You get them on eBay as well. I had it in a four wheel drive robot kit that I robbed. Now it's a three wheeled robot. I went ahead and just fastened things together. No issues whatsoever on install. Things went pretty good. The bearings were a little bit more of a fight. I ended up having to remove just a tiny bit of material from the 3D printed parts. Just a tiny bit of over extrusion on the posts. No big deal. Some of them were okay, but yeah, prepare yourself to just do a little bit of filing and the bearing should slide right on. Then I went ahead and just sort of set things together with the crank arms and on to the support pegs. No issues at all. I ran into a couple more that were just a little snug, so if you're like me and really rammy, out comes the Dremel tool. Easy peasy. A pair of channel locks can help get the bearings home as well. Wiring the motor is straightforward, just positive and negative. I ended up using a pulse width modulated driver module from eBay because that's what I had on hand. Adafruit tutorial has you using a, a full on microcontroller to drive the motor and that's fine, but it's completely overkill for this application. I suspect that's just what they had on hand. So like me, that's what they used. I wired up the pulse width driver module and just set it into the case. The rotary encoder on the end allows you to slip it through the box and then use the nut to hold it down. Nothing to it beyond that. It takes up a lot less space in the box. 
At this point, I had to go ahead and test things, and sure enough, it worked just as intended. Some of the bearings were a little bit tight. I had to do a little bit of work here and there just to take a little bit of load off of it because of the way I had pressed them in, but then everything was nice and free. So it was time to put the top cover on. This is just held down with three screws, nothing to it. And a bottom cover to round things out. We are done. Adafruit also provided the files for a holder, a base to keep your jar or your flask from flying all over on the top. So I went ahead and put this into place as well. It doesn't fit my jars terribly well, but I can make my own now by scaling this. And this is the end result. Pretty cool for just 3D printed parts and a few handfuls of electronics and bolts and hardware. Just wonderful what we can make. I've tested this out with some pretty heavy objects and it will move a lot of liquid without a problem. It, I can't stall it, that's for sure. I think I run the risk of deforming or breaking the arms before the thing would actually stop moving. Overall, this is exactly what I had hoped for from the start. Really simple. I just have to get a power jack, a barrel jack, and, and a power supply. Right now, I just have it fed from my bench top. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel, go ahead and click a thumbs up. If you really like it, join me on Patreon or become a channel member. It helps me make more projects like this and share them out open source with the world. If you make one of these or something similar, I'd love to hear from you. Just hit me up on Discord, which is linked down below. I love seeing other people's projects. I'll be using this in an upcoming video, multiple in fact, where we're going to attempt some kind of lab experiments, a little bit of a departure from the, for the channel, but I think it's uh, quite interesting. So good luck in all your projects.